today you're going to hear from two very professional artists working in the same medium, but very differently. Lorraine Alexander and Yolanda Ward are both paper collage artists using handmade papers as their medium of choice. To make a paper collage, an artist will either cut or tear small pieces of paper from a larger piece and then use these pieces to make a picture. A clay is a computer-generated print of very high quality, which Lorraine can describe in more detail. Both artists have been members of several prestigious galleries in the Philadelphia area and throughout the United States. Lorraine lives here and runs a yearly collage class. During Lorraine's many, many travels to foreign countries, she collected handmade papers. <clears throat> she also incorporates paint on many of her collages to define facial features as well as skin tones and shadows. In this show, Lorraine's G Clay's prints are displayed next to each corresponding original paper collage. Take time to enjoy and compare the original with the G Clay. Yolanda Ward only uses handmade paper. She does not add any paint to her work, although it looks like there is paint on the canvas. If she doesn't have the paper she needs, she would just go and make it. This is a very slow, laborious process. She never, never adds paint. Yolanda was scheduled to show her work in January and February of 2022, but back in the fall of 2021, I received a call from her explaining that she had just been diagnosed with cancer and needed to start chemotherapy right away. She asked if she could postpone her show until the fall. During this time, Yolanda created the pictures now on display in the gallery. They are symbolic of her emotions during this traumatic period in her life. She uses objects to represent her re reactions to the therapy she was experiencing. These pictures are from a series she titles the White Vase Series. And now Yolanda will explain a little about her method of working. Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, hello, my name is Yolanda Ward, and I'm a paper collaged artist. Before I get into my art and my process, I would like to tell you why being here today is so special to me. Throughout my life, not only was I blessed with a really fabulous mother, I was always blessed with what I call guiding mothers. They would touch my life in a way that lifts me up and spread their protect, protective love all over me. Lorraine Alexander is one of those mothers. She has loved on me since I met her. <laughs> Try not to fill up. Uh, she has loved on me since I met her in 2017, five years ago right here at the Rigel Park when I had my first show here. When I would tell people I was having a show here, everyone, and I mean everyone, would say, oh, Lorraine is gonna wanna talk to you. <laughs> I had no idea what that meant or who she was. 
All I do know is I was getting really curious and a little afraid. <laughs> so when I saw her coming towards me, I knew this must be her. She walked up to me and hugged me and said she had prayed for me. She wanted God to send her someone who loved the paper like she did. We both cried, and so our life journey began from that moment. Another guiding mother on my life path, giving loving guidance, positivity, and loving care to carry with me throughout the rest of my life. We had so many things in common, our ooing and ah about a sheet of paper, <laughs> or artwork, or how beautiful a color is, but the biggest thing is our love of God, family, and one another. I am truly honored to be here today and showing my art with another one of my guiding mothers, Lorraine Alexander. <laughs> all my work, as Perky said, it's all paper. Lorraine's paper, my paper, paper I make, it's just one of the saving graces that takes me through my day. And now we're gonna hear from my God and mother, <laughs> Lorraine Alexander. And my daughter did this. It's full of people that I know and love, and it's wonderful. And thank you all for coming. <laughs> yeah, I'll read this. It's very short. I don't believe in talking very much. Since the day we met, I've been a guiding mother to Yolanda, who has become one of my daughters, and she really is a daughter. She will be the recipient of my huge paper collection after I pass away. And I've been looking for this all my life, and she uses paper in a beautiful, beautiful way, and she's a very, very, very good artist. A G clay is a print made by a special machine that produces a top-notch production. One can use a small print with a large painting, which is what my show is all about. A painting can be this big, and the sheet clay can be this big. It's, it's really very strange, and it's not expensive, and people can buy them, and whatever happens. I don't mean from me, I mean out on the market. Uh, Perky has given Yolanda and me the opportunity to show together using similar papers with different ways of usage. Irv Leventhal, who was an absolute genius, has worked regularly with all of Perky's shows, so we were fortunate in having him hang ours. Thanks a million, Irv, wherever you are here. Well, go and enjoy the show. Love to you all. Thank you. Okay, that's a question. Irv just asked, what's that picture? For the past 10 years, I have been uh, submitting to the Woodmere Museum's annual show. Never got picked. And this year, I got picked. <laughs> and it also won an award. I know, right? Unbelievable. So the theme was migration, and so you could just submit a painting or whatever. So I did my paper thing, and I called this migration of another kind. And it's all paper. It took me forever, but yeah, there's no paint. There's no paint. Every little bit, even those little fine pieces, 
that create the grasses and the lace on her dress. Um, and Lorraine's papers are in there too. I mean, I, I, I have paper everywhere. When I'm finished a piece, papers on everything, it's all over the floor, it's on my dog, it's just everywhere. <laughs> but that's what that is. And I brought it because it was supposed to ship out to the gallery that represents me, but I held it back for a couple of days just so I could bring it to the show because Miss Lorraine did not see it at the show. <laughs> lady would like to know if there is a protective coating. There's a coating, it, but it's acrylic medium. The same medium that goes into the paint, but I use it as an adhesive and as, as a protection. How is the paper adhered to the board? It's adhered with the medium, the acrylic medium. It, it works in both ways. It protects and it, and it adheres. And so there's layers of it and layers and layers because I put down like a lot of layers. Like you'll see just this top one, but underneath there are layers and layers of bits and pieces of paper. How did you come to this technique? How did you, what, what sort of, there must be various kinds of techniques. How did you get, get, to, to, where you get to where you are? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, you know, I, I searched for it. You know, I wanted to do some work that wasn't like anybody else's work. So I tried multiple things and as I learned, because in the beginning I used paint because I didn't know how to create it with the paper. And then when I, like especially skin tones, you know, that was really hard. Hair, like things that were hard. So I painted until I learned how the paper, how I could make the paper <laughs> do what I wanted it to do. And so it grew little by little to the point where I didn't need any paint at all. Did you start as a little girl? How did you, <laughs> have, as far as the artistry is concerned? Well, I mean, did you, you went to school, you, what, what's your background? Did, I'm a hodgepodge. <laughs> <laughs> I've done a little bit of everything. My, my real career path was in the corporate world. So I spent 35 years in corporate America. And I was lucky enough to always have some kind of creative position even though it wasn't painting or paper, but I was, you know, advertising, marketing, branding, graphic design. And then when the financial crisis came, it was a financial company that I worked for, it went under. And so I went in, I knew I would work on art when I retired. <laughs> I didn't know I was gonna work on it this early. So it became another job. So I went in my studio and I just worked until I found the thing that would highlight my work, my process, and take me on this journey. And make money. And make, a, make money. That's the key thing. <laughs> uh, since both of you work differently, or your outcomes are different, how long does it take either one of both of you to get do one picture like that? pretty long for me, I mean, I don't know, but it's bit by bit, you know? What do you mean by bit by bit? Papers, bit by bit with papers. So if you start, you stay with one picture? If you, if you start I, one, I, hello, well, I, you I stay with that one? Working I'm sorry, like, start again. Oh, I'm sorry. I often have several in the works at the same time, but that was when I had a decent studio. This is small, this is, our uh, our dining room. I don't have a dining room, but I have a card table. <laughs> yeah. And Yolanda, how long does it take? Do you work at one at a time, or do you finish? 
Uh, it depends. Um, sometimes I'm focused on one at a time, and then sometimes, because I might need to achieve more things at once, I might have multiple pieces going at the same time. I want Yolanda to tell you about the other kind of work that she's doing with the portraits for these wonderful, wonderful people. But these are commissions. Oh, Which one's mine? Oh, what, what lies beneath? With the trees. Um, I do a lot of storytelling with my work. Like this is a story, but it was specific to what the museum was looking for. Um, my work at home, and if you look me up, I heard somebody looked me up. <laughs> um, on uh, Instagram, Yolanda Ward Art, you'll see the other work that I do. And there's a series I call What Lies Beneath. And I say lies like telling a story. And there's these huge oak trees and there's all these textured papers that create them. And in the roots, because you see the roots of the, in the painting, there are all of the slaves that um, of the slavery time. So you'll see children, you'll see the workers. And on top of that, in the landscape, you'll see the cotton fields. And the cotton, the cotton fields lead you to church. Because everything I do, I try to leave it with faith. Preparatory work you do, is there an underlying pencil drawing and for this work and for Lorraine, if your work with the uh, shoulder on the beach, do you draw do you draw that in before you do the, the paperwork? Oh, oh sure, yeah. Yeah, no, I have my uh, pictures all laid out before I start them and I have to. And then I usually get the uh, colors and the papers that are usable in that particular picture. It takes a long time and it's wonderful. And it's, I loved it. I just loved working with that. Uh, yeah, it is a process. And because I came up in a digital age, I, um, I'm familiar with computers because I, I had one of the first computers when Apple made it. Because I was in graphic design, it was a work thing. But so I use all of my skills, like everything I've done all my life, even as a young girl, you know, I used to peel these matchbook covers because they were layers of paper. I, it just, I needed to keep my hands busy. So I actually use that process in my paper making now to thin the paper because the thinner the paper for me, the better. So there's the paper, the process, I sketch, I sometimes sketch digitally because it's faster depending on if I have a deadline that's coming up, I'll sketch it in the computer, make all of the changes, move things around, work on the layout and everything and then I'll transfer it to the canvas and then I'll try to forget it all. Because you need to forget it all so that you can allow the paper to do what you want it to do. I think you may have answered my question already, um, but I'm just uh, determining it. Um, that, that, that picture, does that represent uh, three slaves escaping? Yes, yes, this is telling the story about, because usually when you think of migration, you think of people coming from another country, and, they're coming for freedom, they're coming for rights of religion, you know, but for African American people, you know, it wasn't like that. And that story doesn't get told a lot, but for us, migration meant getting away from, you know, the, the tyranny, the fear, you know, what we were going to as a people. So it's really just showing how, and that's why she's saying bye, see y'all later. <laughs> um, but it's how migration happens for uh, a, a person of African color. Well, you have answered any questions I've <laughs> I'm an artist, 
and I appreciate your work. Believe me, I know how hard that is. To it's do. my daughter. I have a daughter who's a uh, does is a collage artist. I wish she could be here to see that. She would be inspired oh, by wow. because. And I want to say, I, there's a spot there that is remarkable to me. And it's not, I mean, I can understand, what, but right there in the boat, there's a light <laughs> that just got me. Yes. And I said, oh, this is, this is so wonderful. Thank you. Unfortunately, she, uh, my daughter has uh, arthritis, terrible arthritis, and, but she, Fortunately, her hands are still able to do this nice. would be inspiring to her. Nice. And Lorraine, you are, have been an inspiration to me for a long time. I, don't think oh, you I hope remember. she comes and talks to us. I mean, we'll be delighted to share anything that we know. Well, I, I would appreciate that. Sure. I, I hope you'll have time to do that. Of course. But <laughs> it, it, I'm just enjoying every minute. Thank Thanks you. for talking. All right. Well, okay. Somebody wait, I'm running over here. I'm just still Donahue. Thank you. Doesn't matter. I'm person here. I'd like to know. I'd like to know whether you've ever thought about doing human portraits, portraits of human beings. I I have portraits. If you go to my website. There's a series that I do, it's called Girl with Fabric Scarf. And it's a take on the girl with pearl earring, but it's an African-American woman okay. and she's got her scarf. And so each year I add to that series and this is why it was so important for me to figure out how to make skin out of paper. <laughs> Um, so I do portraits all the time. I have a Malcolm X that people keep trying to get me to do more. <laughs> um, so yes, I do. She does a lot politically. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Yeah. A lot of commissions. Tell them yeah. about the one you just finished. About the woman. What, what was the name? Oh, the Supreme Court judge. <laughs> Katanji. I got a commission to do um, a, a portrait of her, um, and I just finished that about a month or so ago. Kentaji Jackson. Kentaji Jackson, and um, it had the Capitol in the background, and it had uh, the flag, wow. some of the stripes, and then the stars rolled into her robe because it's a blue robe, and so the star field. And there was a, um, you know, of course, her braids, and it was. It turned out really good. I was happy with it, and so was the commission. Yolanda. Okay. Um, okay. I was wondering if you'd talk about the central figure and how she's turned, and how you felt about doing this figure. Okay. Well. The central figure is really me. <laughs> I mean, it's a part of the story of migration, but at that time, I was just finishing up with the breast cancer stuff, and I was had enough. And so that's where the hand and all the drama and all of the crazy um, was a part of this piece. So this piece has many messages as well as covering the theme for the Woodmere's project. It is behind me. <laughs> it is behind me. I have a question. So I noticed that on the lower part where the boat is, you have writing. Did you do that writing or was that on the paper? I did see? not. <laughs> I did not do, it's in the paper. And um, it talks about traveling. It talks so, about your, oh yeah, like every piece, every piece that I choose, it's purposeful. Like, you know, the, the littlest bit, I mean, everything, you know, cause you get lost in there and it's gonna talk to you. It's gonna tell you what to do. And 
So when I wanted some words, I wanted it to be a part of this, this story. You know, I, I always research, before, before I even get to the layout, I have done all this research about the subject matter, and then I kind of try to compile it all together. So everything is purposeful, every little bit. I just, I have a couple of questions if I may. First of all, I enjoyed it very much. I enjoyed both of your work very much. And uh, you, you seem to refer to them all as pictures, which I think is more than, uh, as less than they deserve. I think they are, uh, uh, most of them are the pictures that are emotionally felt, that move us in some way, and that is what art is about, really. It's about saying things that we've been thinking of that uh, someone else put on paper or on canvas or whatever. So I thank you for that. And um, I'm very interested too in your process and I'm curious about the, the picture painting. It's not a painting actually, but the piece of art you have on the easel. And that is it looks as if it's, uh, it's, on, it's uh, has it on stretches. It's not as if it's not really quite on board. Is it, what is that on? Is that on board? Or? It, it's on canvas. It's, it's a stretcher. Canvas. Mm -hmm. The canvas makes a big difference in what you're doing, you know. It does. Because uh, you're dealing then with a material that moves itself. Mm -hmm. So that if you're on board, it's a lot easier for you. Mm -hmm. Although it does have some movement, but that's 100 years from now. But, but on, on, on fabric, you know, you have humidity problems, you have uh, all kinds of things that can really affect what you're putting down. Did you put a surface on the canvas before you started working? There's a surface on the canvas. And also on the canvas for me, because the paper that I like and the way that I thin it, like I can hold the brush on there too long on the canvas and it will melt away. Like, it'll just be gone. <laughs> I'm gonna go, no. So I've learned to control every bit of the process on the canvas because it's moving. But that it's a great learning thing when it you're is. doing art to have mm -hmm. the, the material move. Mm -hmm. Because if you have a rigid material, it's much more, well, I hate to say the word mechanical, it's not really, but to a degree. But if the material, both the materials move and you're moving, mm -hmm. the head is moving, your arm is moving, mm -hmm. the surface is moving, <laughs> and, the, and the paper is moving, mm -hmm. then it, it's, you got a good combination. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a dance. We're dancing, the, and I mean, I'm going back and forth and back. I mean, my whole day is, you know, these bits and, you know, pulling more. And, you know, like you said, the canvas is moving, the paper is moving, I'm moving. It's a, it's, a, it's a thing, <laughs> it's a real thing. And then you'll see it, you know, because it, it really is about the emotion. But you gotta watch it. Mm -hmm. not, not too much. Yeah. Do, do you um, use, oh, um, do you use the gel medium throughout? I mean, your transparencies are so impressive. Do you ever use the matte medium on under layers and then just the, the gel medium on the surface layers? Or is it gel right straight through? Okay, here's my secret. <laughs> I mix my own. Like I mix a combination of the gel with the matte until it's like pancake batter. And then I know it's the right consistency. And then I use that throughout the whole piece. But I don't choose one over the other because the properties of each one is something else. But I found that if you combine them, you know, I get that just right thing that I'm looking for. Okay. I think they brought some food around here. Okay. I think so too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all for coming, and do take some time to enjoy the refreshments. They're not heavy. 
and they won't spoil your dinner. And thank you all, and if you both would go out in the gallery, so if they want to ask specific questions, you can.